Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Factorio. This episode number 18 of Recursion Recursion. We are nearing the end for this series and for this base. I've spent more time on this map and this project than any other Factorio series previously by a factor of at least 50%. It's getting a little bit ridiculous. So we need to finish up. Hopefully with the addition we did last time with the uh, Bob's Logistics Mark IV Fusion-powered robots, the very expensive ones, which do not need to charge. Hopefully, we'll see a little bit of uh, benefit to our frame rate as we continue filling out the base. We filled out about 50% of it so far. And here are our production numbers. We are consuming... We have been uh, basically sustaining this 2.6, 2.7 thousand science per minute for a little while now for a few hours. So that's pretty good. We have broken through our previous bottleneck before I added the, the new robots. We were at about 1.2 thousand. We were over a thousand. We were official vanilla plus factorissimo megabase, which I really wanted to do before we added anything else. Achieve that. Now, if I had made the base less large, uh, we probably could have done more with the higher frame rate. But the goal we are going for, which I don't think I ever actually mentioned, because I wasn't sure if we, I didn't want to say it because uh, like I didn't want to jinx myself. I didn't know if we'd ever actually get there. But the the value I wanted to originally get to is 5,000 science per minute. You can tell we are we've got two of these buildings filled out and we're at uh, 2.6. So double that is a little bit over 5K. Pretty easy. Simple math. We've got to fill out the other two and the other half of the floors on the, uh, the rest of the base. It has been quite a problem with lag. This is actually... Oh, that's weird. Why are there only two instances on this floor? Huh. Okay, that's interesting. If we go to any other floor, you can see there's three here. If we go back up in here, we can see on some there's floor. There's four floors per map. You can see there's four here. I don't know why there's two on the other. I thought it was adding, like, once it gets to 100, it starts going 200, 300... We've got somewhere between three to four hundred uh, different instances, which is stressing out the game a lot. This is very far from your typical Factorio Megabase. I don't know if anybody's ever really done something like this. I've certainly never seen any evidence of it, like on the Factorio Reddit or uh, YouTube or anything like that. So we are uh, pushing the game in ways it's not really designed to go. And as a result, it's gotten quite laggy. But we're going to finish it. And even if it goes down to like five frames a second, I don't care. We're going to do it. So one of the big bottlenecks right now in terms of filling out the rest of the base is the production of Speed Module 3s, Productivity Module 3s, and these new uh, logistics robots, all of which are extremely expensive in terms of, what is it? Yes, that's right, processing units, the blue circuits. And we've previously updated our base to make as many of those as we can, as fast as we can. So we can't really speed that up anymore for this series. And so, instead of just standing around, we will try to occupy ourselves as we craft stuff. Here's my little buffer chest for blue circuits. You can tell it's empty. The uh, processing units, which we don't need quite as many of, they have... They're not quite caught up, but uh, there's more of those around than our speed modules. And as you can see from these chests here, each one of these chests will fill out... I've got it, the logistics request set up to fill out what we need to fill in one of the smelting levels for the iron for the copper or for the steel. They're all basically the same for their requirements to fill out those floors. And we have about half of those left to do. I'm gonna fill out the rest of the smelting, but really we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna be twirling our thumbs a little bit while we wait for the processing units. Probably if I stopped uh, doing research for a little bit, that might help, but I wanted to make sure that we were consistently and sustaining our research and not just being able to do it in spurts, because there's a lot of chests in between the different layers, and so there's a lot of lag in between starting up the base when it's been rested, and then having the base at uh, full throughput with with no like chests sitting around with full stuff that it's drawing from, instead of drawing from the machines actually making stuff. But we're gonna have extra stuff to do. So one of the things we are going to do while we wait for speed modules and uh, productivity modules and the Robot Mark IVs to continue made. I'm actually gonna siphon these off. So while I'm away, we can hopefully work towards that uh, 1,000 limit. In fact, just to make sure it never stops, I'm just gonna set that to 2K. Let's run outside. And, oh, let's pick this up, we'll need this guy. 
We are going to do a little bit of work on some train stops, a slight redesign. Okay, let's run out this way. We are going to run out this way. These are the new faster robots. Run out this way. Looks very uh, stripped down now. These are the slower ones, obviously. Not as much going on on this level because we're bypassing things directly with the uh, direct item transfer. Okay, now we're outside. So we need to work on our iron and copper train stops to load. S whoop. Okay, little lag. To load stuff into the base as fast as possible. You can see we've got a train missing here, and now one loading in. We need to double up basically everything on the inside, which means all this stuff will be twice as active. We'll need to replace these slower robots with the faster ones. There are 7,500 uh, normal logistics robots out here, um, and a lot of roboports, so maybe that will help a little bit with the lag. I don't know if it's actually going to help. The killing points or the, the nail in the coffin for the base might just be the... The 400 instances of the Factorissimo we have, which the game is not really... I, the developers, I don't think, are actively trying to balance around that, because that's not the way the game normally works. Okay, let's head out here. We're going to work, while we're uh, producing that other stuff, we're going to work on updating our... Like I described in previous episodes, we're going to update our train stops. So previously, or currently, currently, we have... One belt going to each cargo wagon on each side. So we can immediately double the amount of stuff going to our cargo wagons if we just duplicate this on the other side. But we could also double up the amount of belts. It takes, if you're going chest to chest or inventory to inventory, it takes about two of these guys to throughput, uh, have the throughput of one blue belt. Going from a belt to a chest, it takes, uh, it's like three and a half or four. So we can almost support two belts per side if we just add more belts. And I did show in a last, I think the end of the last episode, I do have, if I can find the book for it, yeah, I've got this design for a more dense set of mining drills. We just have to find room for more belts. And one thing we will have to do is upgrade from, uh, from that balancer, which is doing 12 to 12. Oh, there's our research. This is doing, a, this is a 12 to 12 balancer. We want the same amount of items going to each cargo wagon so it loads consistently. So we're not waiting on one of these 12 cargo wagons fill up. So we need a balancer. Here's the balancer we're gonna use. Do I have, oh, you know what? Yeah, let's, uh, let's get some extra stuffs just so I can plop this thing down. Okay, let's grab some belts and we want some splitters and some underground belts. All right. Okay, and let's, uh, maybe we should add some more, we don't need this many legs. Let's add some more of these roboports so we can craft things or place things down faster. Here is a 24 to 24 balancer. I found this on a, uh, Factorio Blueprint website. I don't remember the exact name of it, but if you just Google Factorio Blueprint, probably that's all you need. Yeah, it should come up. This is a 24 to 24 balancer. It's way bigger than the other one. Look at these guys go. Okay, while they're uh, recovering and getting inside me, let me zoom back down here to an iron outpost. Let me overlay this bad boy. This guy here is 12 to 12. We need to go to a 24 to 24, and a 24 to 24 on either side. So it's going to be like that, and like that. So this thing's it's going to get a little bit bigger. We probably won't need uh, this many train positions in our stacker. We, so I, maybe I could even just like carve out the side and um, simplify what we already have. It's going to be something like that. I did consider a different option, which would be much more compact. And it looks something like this. This looks probably pretty silly to you because it is. This is not a perfect balancer. This is just a bunch of splitters. We've got through the middle here, 12. We're not gonna use this design. I just wanted to mention it. Uh, what this kind of design does is it forces things. You'll have more items in the middle and less items on the edges. So you end up with kind of like a bell curve where the middle will be totally packed and the edges will have less, which doesn't seem ideal if you're trying to make your train sit there until they're full. We could, if we use that design, we could switch to a stop at the train station for amount of time design where it stops at the train station for, let's say 30 seconds or something like that. And if the end cargo wagons, the ones in the front and the ones at the very end, if they're not quite full, It'll just take off and go back to our base. 
which actually kind of makes sense for this base. I almost went with this design. It would be way more compact. Now, if you notice, we've got trains here, and these, these chests at the extremities here, they're getting unloaded last because the, the robots always want to take the, uh, the things that are closest. And so they go, we'll see right here. As soon as this train stops, all these robots are going to stop going this long distance. They're going to take the short distance. And if we use that more compact, only splitters balancer design, then the robots would have more things to take from the center and less from the edges. That's, uh, that's kind of an interesting idea. We're just not going to go with it. I just thought I'd mention it. Let's take it down. We'll never see it again. Maybe it would have been better. I don't know. And voila, there we go. We've gone from 12 belts going to 12 cargo wagons to 48 belts going to f 12 cargo wagons, not 48 cargo wagons. Four belts for every single cargo wagon, servicing both sides, six inserters per cargo wagon. And now I've got to basically redo a lot of it because once I've gotten to this stage, I'm starting to think of how the belts are going to get from the ore patch to the train system. And just if we, uh, let's zoom in on one of our ore patches here, something like this. So we're going to have ore going out on belts out either side, and then it has to get to the one side of the train and the other side of the train. So we need to route all those belts, hopefully in the most compact way, or at least reasonably compact. If we do it like this, let's say the ore patch is over here to the right, we've got to bend all those belts, which means there's gonna be like a thing going like this. To make space for all these other belts, it's gonna be way up there, which is gonna take a lot of space. Uh, so I think what I'm actually going to do I'm just going to take this the, this guy here, this big 24 belt balancer, and we're going to move him. Is that the right direction? Yeah, it's facing the right direction. We're going to move him over like this. And there we go. All the belts have been reworked. They're coming in all from the right, all 48 belts. A lot of underground belts going through these 24 to 24 balancers, and then they go to the cargo wagons. This design is going to take a heck of a lot of underground belts. We just take a brief look here. It's going to be, oh, I can't see the number. It's going to be uh, 1,300 underground belts, 1,300 blue belts, plus all that other stuff. For every single iron outpost, the copper outpost, of course, will be a little bit smaller because we have 10 cargo wagons instead of 12, but a lot of underground belts. But I guess that's okay. We want to scale up anyway. It needs to be faster, and each one of these guys will produce four times the amount of ore as our old outposts, so it's not that big of a deal. The old outposts, which were like this, they took... 800 belts, so we're using less belts comparative to the amount of throughput, uh, but a lot more underground belts, but whatever. One thing we're not going to do, I'm not going to build two different versions, like I had the left version and the right-handed version, because it's just, uh, it's too fiddly when <laughs> this thing is gigantic. I'm only making one version. I'm not going to make another one. We will have to make a copper version. I'm not going to rebuild the, or redesign the iron or the coal or the other guys, because I think they'll be okay. We just need so much copper and iron that uh, we need to do this for them, but probably not for the others. So the next thing to worry about or to think about is uh, how this integrates with our mining blueprint, the new one. Yeah, so this is uh, what I came up with independently of making this, this new outpost design. And we've got, you can see the underground belts there. We've got them in clusters of three based on uh, just the, the limitation of how far underground belts can stretch. So I had to do it that way. But we've got this balancer which splits up our belts into groups of six. And this is just going to get a little bit fiddly. I'd like to streamline this a little bit. Can we come up with a minor design which puts our belts in groups of six and groups, instead of groups of three? If we can find a design that puts our belts in groups of six, it'll make uh, placing our new outpost a lot more streamlined. So to fiddle with that, let's run up here. This will be probably, I guess, the last step before we can start adding these guys. Incidentally, we really need these new outposts. Like right now, since I've had the research running nonstop, you can see we now have four, four iron train stations uh, empty because we're just using so much ore, our current outposts can't keep up. There, the current bot. Oh my God, it's autosave. Hello, autosave. You're taking your sweet time, aren't you, autosave? That's, that's a really long autosave. Come on. Okay, there we go. Okay, so let's place this guy down, and then we'll try to make a version with six parallel belts instead of three. Robots, get to it. So what we'll have to do, because of the limitation of the underground belts, we're going to have to place basically just... Uh, 
some kind of in-between thing. Let me grab these guys. So currently we've got them like that. And I think if we have a, a section of our mining operation where we've split the miners, instead of having them this dense, if we split them up to, uh, to allow an extra set of underground belts, we might be able to double up. So here's what I came up with for our new mining blueprint. At first, I was going to try to do a six belt length and then a six belt gap, and then another six belt length based on how this, uh, this big balancer here is laid out. We've got six belts, and then there's a gap of six belts, and then six more belts. But th that gap, it's not consistent. Then there's four belts here, so that would be different. Then we have six belts again, six belts, six belts, and then we have a different gap in between here. Although I did squeeze them closer together, so we would have six belts there. It would just be a little bit inconsistent. So I squeezed everything together. Now we've got this really fantastic looking row of 48 consecutive belts. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. And since all the different ore patches are slightly different sizes, this will make it a little bit easier to adapt things. I think a little bit more straightforward. If all of our, if our mining outposts just have a row of consecutive jammed packed together belts and our mining outposts can do jam packed together belts and we'll just lay them down until we have enough and we'll have to merge some when we have a little bit left over or that kind of thing. So this is the blueprint. So currently we've got, for this entire section, each belt is only being supplied by two of these mining drills and I've added speed modules now, our current, and it's about to go up by another 2% or whatever. Our current productivity bonus is 332%. So I decided to up our speed by 150% just to help out. We could add an extra, what, 30% uh, productivity? but it would slow things down. I don't think it's worth it when our productivity bonus is already so high. I think it's better to speed things up at this point. So if you see this blueprint, it looks really stretched out, but it does tile if we just put things together like that. And we can let the robots go. Let me get out of the way of the robots. So this is eight belts wide. We need 48 for the mining outpost for the iron. So we would just need to lay down six of these and Merge belts whenever we have a leftover. So we can now go into this book and we can delete this blueprint. I never even named it. And then we can grab our new one and we will do, uh, just name it um, mining, whatever. All right, so now that we've got a fancy schmancy new mining outpost blueprint, and since our base is not keeping up with our mining demand, I think it's about time we set this guy up with a actual outpost and see what I messed up, see everything works properly, all that kind of stuff. Fix any problems, we'll just do this like this. We will have to dodge these, uh, the stone and coal, which is here, which is a little bit inconvenient. That's a big blueprint. Yeah, so this mining outpost, or this mining patch right here, it's fairly small. There's another goddamn Odyssey, wouldn't you know it? So this mining patch is only 16 million ore, one of the smaller ones available to us. We have some available that are over 100 million, like, uh, let's see, down here. This one's 170 million, for instance. So not the biggest in terms of the amount of ore, and also not the biggest in terms of the amount of space it takes up but it's, it'll be a good test case based on the size of this guy if, uh, since I already placed that guy, let's filter around. Here's our, uh, yeah, let's filter around to our mining rig. So we're gonna be able to fit, looks like two of these. So each one of these belts is only going to be supported by four mining drills, which is not going to compress the belt, which is okay. It'll get better as we go along, as we get more and more productivity. And it will be, it won't be exactly four times our old output. We did quadruple the amount of belts. They won't be all full, but it will be more output and we can at least figure out uh, how the, how the whole thing is working. And now let's plug it in. Let's see what I screwed up. Everything should turn on. We've got stone ore around the outside, which hopefully I dodged properly. And then uh, coal ore here. And I didn't spend too much time trying to like fiddle to make sure like all the different belts will get the same amount. Hopefully in the fullness of time and we have enough mining productivity, it'll do pretty well. 
Seems to be doing all right. Okay, so um, since we have quadruple the amount of belts, this is actually, this is already more output than we had before. And I just want to make sure that all of the belts are going the right direction. And once they filter down, uh, do we have things arriving at all the different belts down here? That's kind of the important part. And do we, uh, do we only have iron ore? Did I screw any of that up? I'm only seeing iron ore at the moment, so that's pretty good. I could also probably add some more splitters, like, uh, I could probably add one like here. Although I guess they are all headed for that balancer, so maybe that's not quite necessary. There, yeah, let's just keep it simple. Let's not worry too much about it, as long as we're only getting iron ore. I think it'll be a pretty big improvement. I'm only seeing the iron ore, that's good, these belts are already backed up. They are going through the splitter. What is that right there? Oh, I blew up a chest a minute ago. All right, that's looking pretty nice. That's a lot of ore. All right, let's turn on our trains. I set up four trains for this guy just to uh, do a test run. Probably what I'll try to average. As we get farther and farther away from our base, some of these ore patches are pretty far away. Let's see, you're going to, yeah, the outpost. Or I could just tell it to go to station. Go to station. Same thing, basically. Go to station. As we get farther and farther away from the outpost, we can try to squeeze more trains in, but probably don't want too many per outpost. Just enough so that they're all being active, basically. There we go. Okay. So, I think everything looks good. Let's just do a spot check. Are all the different belts getting ore? It looks like they are. I see all the belts getting ore. And then going and looking through the uh, the balancers, looks like all the different belts have ore on them. All the belts going into the balancers have ore on them. So it looks like I didn't screw up anything too major. All right, success. And with the snap of my fingers and a little bit of editing and hours of work off camera, we have another iron outpost added to the base and four other trains, which we will turn on in just a moment with the addition of our, I think we're back up to uh, basically current capacity of 2.6 thousand per minute with the addition of that other train station. And uh, I guess we'll just keep adding them until we need more and more and more. We have uh, produced a lot of speed modules and also a lot of those robots. Let's see, we want to go to the outpost first. So go to that, oh, let's not get hit by the train. Go to outpost. Go to outpost, can I click this one from here? It's a little bit too far away, we'll have to wait for this guy to pass. We have, an, a, we have a redesigned iron outpost, which uh, at least so far seems to be working the way I wanted it to more or less and we have to do a version with the copper one as well so basically from here on out the rest of it is going to be filling in the rest of the factory levels replacing all of our robots with mark fours that don't require charging they require a stupid amount of processing units and then uh, after that just doing some kind of like throughput analysis and trying to like uh make things a little bit better here and there fix little problems that crop up that kind of stuff Okay, pretty good. So this guy is way over here. This is iron. Oh, incidentally, this is iron outpost number 10. We are in the double digits. This guy here is pretty low. But because of his position on the uh, the train station area, he's not getting used as much because he's on the outer edge, I think. Or maybe, no, maybe he's on the inside edge. Maybe he's just so small that he fills up so slowly he doesn't make it back to station very often. But I think that's about going to do it for this episode. We're almost done. We've got to fill in the base. We've got to replace the robots. we got to fix any problems. we got to watch it work. we got to do some uh, maybe prettying up the place. We need to get rid of as many entities as we can, all the different roboports and that kind of stuff. And then I guess we'll be done in a few more episodes. I don't know exactly how many more, maybe like three, something like that. We'll be done. This guy's done. I'm going to go back to the base. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.